I have an older brother who is autistic. I got to see firsthand how my parents had to coordinate a lot of services. That experience has made me particularly sensitive to the ways that your background and the service availability around you can affect the quality of life you lead. I always liked working with kids growing up, and so what better way to make an impact in many kids' lives than to study a neurodevelopmental disorder that has lifelong consequences and impacts on kids and families. At the Wendy Clagg Center, we take a public health perspective on autism. We leverage a broad range of disciplines that are here at the school, so everything from mental health expertise and department to epidemiology, even to laboratory scientists, and really bringing all of that together so that we can learn from one another to best sort of achieve the goals and needs of our communities. Our first tool, right, is to ask a lot of people a lot of questions. So we want to know about things that happened during a mother's pregnancy. We want to know what pharmaceuticals she took. We want to know where she went and where she lived. We might also ask her to give us a blood sample or some hair or even send us her child's baby tooth because we can work with other scientists who have ways of measuring um, chemicals and substances. And by asking these sorts of questions, it lets us help look for associations or potential connections. One of our focuses is to train and educate the next generation. The Wendy Clagg Center provides opportunities for students through internship placements. We provide support for them to start to develop their own independence as a researcher by providing annual opportunities for a grant application that they could then run their own study as part of the center. I'm also excited about applying to their internship in the fall to work in getting some more clinical perspectives. So I feel like now over the past 20 years, we've really been working up to identifying and characterizing who has autism in our communities. And there's this real recognition now. There are a lot of individuals with autism. And moving forward now, there's lots of momentum. The field has really shifted in our community and in our populations to really wanting to um, help people with autism achieve their best outcomes in life. Autism and neurodevelopment disorders provides a great um, opportunity for researchers across many Johns Hopkins institutions to work together. We have many affiliated faculty members in the School of Medicine and even at the Kennedy Krieger Institute, which really lets us be um, uniquely poised to study autism and neurodevelopment from a public health lens, but also be able to look at translation um, into clinical treatment and interventions and even policy. So there are lots of ways individuals with autism or families that are impacted by autism can be involved with the center. We have a lot of different studies that they might be eligible to participate in. And so we hear from them about what their needs are so that we can better address those needs and meet their needs. And then we also want to share with them what we're learning and what we're finding so that they can use that in their everyday lives. How can we help a child who is diagnosed with autism um, learn to interact with their peers as they head into adolescence? What happens in, as, they, as that individual heads into adulthood? And how how can we make those impacts on a population level? As my brother and my parents age, all of those questions really drive my work and my research. I just finished my first year here and I've already gotten to work with people who do such important surveillance work, who do important health services research work, and so that's been an amazing opportunity. I really couldn't find this anywhere else.